this project I am using 100% just regular quilters cotton and I have my template for you to download in the description box below. It's a PDF file that you can print out at your home computer or maybe at the library and then you can cut it out as you see here. The amount of fabric you'll need is two pieces, one for the head, body and the ears. This is about 10 by 8, 10 and a half by 8. You've got lots of extra space here to kind of place your pieces. And the legs are going to be separated. This is for the hooves and this is for the legs. This is about 5 by 7 and this is a 1 and a half by 7 inch piece. And then you'll need um, two of both. And again, this is going to be for the legs and the hooves. So we have our pieces of fabric we have our template all cut out and ready to be traced but before that we are actually going to connect the hooves to the legs before we trace on our pattern i like to make sure that i have again the five by sevens two pieces and two pieces of the one and a half by seven i like to make sure everything is nice and pressed flat um, and make sure that your edges are nice and square so that when you go to sew it everything's just really clean and even um, there's a little bit of creasing in there but that's just because this fabric was folded for forever and i couldn't get it out so what i'm gonna do before i get started is i'm gonna place my pieces together here and if you have a fabric that you're using make sure you place the right sides together this one it doesn't matter because it's pretty much the same on both sides so i'm gonna line up my pieces like so and i am gonna take this to the machine and i'm gonna sew about an eighth of an inch just right along the edge here okay now i have my hoof piece sewed onto my leg piece and i'm gonna just take it over to my iron here and i'm just gonna press press my seams Pete for both sides Now I'm going to trace on the template pieces onto the fabric starting off with the leg. You can see here that one is pointing, one is facing downwards and one of the hooves is facing upwards. This is to make sure that when I place my seams together, it's nice and flush like that instead of it being too bulky going in one direction and that can cause the fabric to slip a little bit. So this is a way that it's nice and even and the seams match up perfectly and you can get a nice flush seam for the leg. Let me show you an example. If we don't have the seam separated like this, then here's an example of what that may look like for the finished product. The seams just don't match up nicely. This one is actually pretty nice, but then you have ones like this that kind of misses it completely. So it doesn't look too bad, but if you want a nice neat finish, just make sure that those seams are in opposite direction so that they don't end up looking like this. Go ahead and I pin that down so that it does not shift. Now I'm going to take my template piece and I am going to place this line, the hoof line, right on top of my seam here. And you should leave about a quarter of an inch extra seam allowance on the side. gonna make my marks for the openings and continue right over that seam onto the hoof part depending on what color your fabric is you may need a different color but I can kind of still see my pencil well enough Okay, so now I'm going to repeat this or one more time. Make my mark here, make sure I have enough seam allowance. Okay, now I'm going to repeat this two more times, but instead of leaving an opening on the side, I'm now going to leave an opening on the top. If you'd like, you can add a bit more pins just to really keep everything nice and in place. 
Then you can go ahead, and I already did it, but you can trace on your other pieces. So your head, two ears, you can trace onto the ends of your fabric like this because the ears, I do have the seam allowance already in the ear template. And then when you trace on your body, trace on the arm pieces here and then also the legs on the bottom. And then now we're gonna cut out our pieces, making sure we leave at least a quarter of an inch seam allowance all the way around. Now when you have both sides together, I'm going to very gently cut a little slit into where those arm pieces are. And that's going to be our notches so that we can line up everything nicely. So next thing, we are going to sew the legs and arms first, the head, the ears, and the body will be safe for last. So for the headpiece, I am going to go ahead and do the dart now. So once you sew around the perimeter here, you're going to take your scissors and I like to cut right in between or right on the inside of my mark just like that like you're cutting a little piece of pizza out okay. now I'm gonna take my fingers and kind of slide it open and now we are gonna match up these two seams together here and I'm gonna take these seams and open this up And kind of use my fingers and press it open and same for this bottom piece just like that so now you should have these corners matched up your seams opened and finger pressed opened and now I'm gonna sew and this part you kind of have to fidget with it a little bit to get it to sit right here okay and I like to make everything nice and flat and even that way it slides nicely underneath the needle on the sewing machine so it should look something like this now I'm gonna take this to the sewing machine and I'm gonna leave about an eighth of an inch distance away from this opening here and I'm gonna sew a straight line from this point all the way straight across to this point and do a little back stitch make sure everything's nice and flat you might have to help it through the machine a little bit or at least that's usually what I have to do okay I'll do to the other end and then I'm just gonna do a little back stitch again and that's it trim off my tail at this point we're gonna trim up all of our pieces here we should have our head sewn our four limbs and our two ears. I'm gonna use a pinking shears to cut off my seam allowances. I'm gonna start off with the head. Make sure you give yourself a little bit of room but still get nice and close up to the seam line. Be careful not to cut into any seams. This part might be a little bit tricky as you come up to the spot where it split so just be careful. For the head, you're gonna make it flat again and then you're gonna cut off this top part and again, leaving a little bit of seam allowance, maybe like a quarter inch, okay? And then I'm just gonna continue on to the other parts. Okay, and then this, you can just leave it how it is because it's gonna be flat, so that should be fine. I'm going to come in with my smaller scissors and I'm going to snip a little bit closer into the seam line towards the neck just so it has some more movement here and also I'm going to clip the curves around the nose and snip off any corners like so. 
Okay, and those will be ready to be turned inside out. Now I can move on to the legs here. And just repeat the same process. Once you have your limbs all snipped, you don't have to worry about the top ends, but you do have to snip off the corners for the hooves to get rid of the bulk. I'm gonna use my favorite tool, hemostats, and a paintbrush to do this. I'm gonna show the legs first. I'm gonna take my hemostats. I'm just gonna kind of pinch the bottom here and slowly slide it up through the opening. Okay, and then you'll repeat with the top. Then I'll use my paintbrush and I will help push open the seams and push out the corners, making sure that I'm not too rough so that I don't pierce the seam opening or pierce the seam and make an opening really. <laughs> okay, just go right around. You're gonna repeat that step for the rest of the legs and also the ears and the head. Once you have everything turned inside out, this step is optional, but I like to give it a nice press again with the iron and that just makes all the edges nice and crisp, get all the wrinkles out. I'm not stuffing the limbs a lot, so it can leave some wrinkles. It doesn't usually, but I mean, depends how you wanna work. Um, then I like to take the ears and fold the bottom in half and you can press it at the iron or you can just do like a little finger press and make a crease there because that helps with the ear crease when you're sewing it on. For the head, I'm just gonna tuck in those extra seams like so, flush with those corners. And again, you can press it with the iron or just do like a little finger press like that. For the ears, you can go ahead and push down your raw edge about a quarter of an inch into itself like so it definitely helps if you have the hemostats i kind of just like to open it up like that again finger press i actually like to clip these shut so they have so they stay like that and then try to get those to match up in length as best as you can now this is where it gets a little bit tricky. We're gonna remove our pieces here and take our marked piece. And now I am going to flip this over. So we have our notches here in the fabric. And now we're gonna separate the legs from the arms. So the legs have the openings on the top and the arms have the openings on the side here. So we're gonna separate those. Okay, now I'm gonna lightly stuff the, the legs Okay, so now this step is definitely optional. I am going to fill the legs with some poly pellets. Add a little bit of pellets. And then I'm going to fill the rest lightly with some stuffing. Okay, they're pretty equal in size and with the stuffing. So now I'm just going to go ahead and close off this edge on the sewing machine. Now that the legs are done, we are gonna base them on to our doll here. I'm gonna take our raw edge and I'm gonna line them up with the raw edge of the doll. And I'm gonna pin it in place. Repeat the same with the other side. Make sure that your leg is in between your two notches there. Okay, try to make them nice and straight like this. I'm gonna go back to the machine and we're gonna base the stitches along the bottom. I'm gonna run it right over the seam to close the leg here. So that's about an eighth of an inch away. Now our legs are basted on. It doesn't have to be perfect. You're not gonna even see this stitch so you don't even have to worry about it. 
Now we are gonna do the same with the arms. The reason why I do the legs like this and I leave the arms flat is because it gets too bulky in the doll. So this way I can do the legs real quick and easy and the arms I'll just stuff after we sew on the body. So now I'm gonna do the same thing with the other side. Just gonna flip these little legs here. Sometimes it's easy if you, it's best if you do a little finger press again. Make sure nothing's flopping everywhere. And I'm gonna find the opening here. So there's my opening. So that one will face down this on this side. And this opening is on this side. Okay, so this one will face down on this way. Take my template. Best thing to have is a disappearing ink marker or a water soluble marker. And I'm gonna mark my arm here with these two points. Just like that, kind of lift it up a little. You have those markings for this arm and you are just gonna match up those two markings in between your notches again. Again, making sure that you're, I guess it doesn't really matter, but I like to have my stuffing seam pointed down. And I'm gonna match those up right in between my two points here. Like that. And then I'm gonna repeat the same for the other arm. Here's my opening, so it's gonna be pointing down this way. The reason why they're turned inside out is when we sew them, the arms are gonna flip out this way. So take your arm template, and now you're gonna flip it over. Match up your seam with your hoof like that. And you're gonna repeat the same steps. Just make your little mark. Make your little mark on this side. Match them up like so. Okay. So that doesn't move. And now just like how we did the legs, I'm gonna go ahead to the machine again and I'm gonna make a basting stitch and I'm gonna run it right along this seam line, but on the outside. So make sure that it's on the outside because we don't want the basing stitch to be on the inside of the body. Now our legs are basted onto the body as well as our arms. Everything is nice and flat and even. And now we can go ahead, flip the legs back up like this. Kind of point them in a little bit point them in a little bit but make sure that you're not lifting up these this bottom part too much just be sure you're not going to sew the legs up into these corner seams here take my other body piece okay so this is where the pins will be your friend <laughs> so as best as possible i start off on the bottom okay, match up my notches here i'm gonna pin this in place Match up my notches, pin this in place. Okay, and as you're going, make sure that your fabric isn't bunching up too much and just try to keep it nice and flat. I know it's bulky in here and the fabric will shift. So I recommend starting from the bottom and working your way up to the top to the opening part. This is why the basting is really important if you don't do this and you kind of just stick the arms in and sew it, it can cause it to shift and then it just doesn't, just doesn't come out the same. It comes out a little bit crooked. So now making sure that you aren't going to sew your hoof, you might have to shift this over and that pulls the bottom a bit. So you just have to be careful for that. Shift it over, start off, and then you can move them back and then straighten this part out. I'm gonna sew all the way around once. So that's gonna be your seam. And then I'm gonna go ahead one more time and I'm gonna do a double seam right on the outside of that. So we're gonna do two seams just so that it's nice and secure.
now that we have our seam our body all sewn we can clean up and trim off the excess edges here you can see i did do a double seam around that's optional if you want it to be a little bit more durable if it's for a baby you might want to have a double seam this one got a little bit close so it looks like one seam but it's an extra seam all the way around you could even just do it over the limbs if you want extra sturdy limbs okay so now i'm going to take my pinking shears i want to start off and get this out the way cut off the bulk of our arms And snip my corner. This part might get a little thick there. So that's it. Now we can turn it inside out. Okay. There we go. I'm going to turn in my raw edge on this side. And I sew in and make that little corner because I just think it helps with keeping this, this raw edge down. So I guess it's just preference. <laughs> All right, and then there we have it. We have the little body. It might be a little bit tricky for some beads, but I'm gonna try. I'm gonna stuff it. I'm gonna stuff the body, stuff the head, and very lightly stuff the ears. I barely put literally anything in it just for a little bit of squish in there. Our next step can be a little fiddly, but this is the best way that I found and the easiest way for me that is. I have my thread knotted, needled, and I kind of overstuff the body so that it stays open like this. I'm going to match up the neck to the body. I'm going to start off in the back. I'm going to start off in the back because that's where we're going to end. Okay, your needle's going to sink in that corner. And I'm just going to find the center back of the doll and I'm going to put the needle through there. I like to start off a little bit in the opposite direction of the way I'm going because it tend when you pull it, it'll gather up and it's going to shift it a little bit so that it'll align. If you start off in the middle, it'll shift it a little bit to the right and it comes out a little bit crooked. I don't know if that makes sense, but I start off a little bit to the left of where I think the center line is going to be. And I'm just going to um, make a very loose ladder stitch and go all the way around. This part doesn't have to be too pretty because this is just a first stitch. Essentially, we're going to do two ladder stitches to really seal on the head to the body. So if it's not perfect, it's okay, but it just needs to be straight. So I start off loose a bit. Again, my raw edges are folded in. That's why I do the corners like that, because it helps keep them folded in. A little at a time, I'm just going to tug to close up that seam. Just to make sure that my head is staying nice and aligned with where I want it to sit on the body. It helps to have a good surface to work on maybe like a silicone mat so the fabric will grab on to the mat a little bit better and the doll isn't going to be sliding all over the place i do not have my silicone mat so my doll is sliding all over the place okay so this is kind of acting as like a basting stitch and also a strong reinforcement okay so you're going to do that all the way around the doll until you reach about an inch gap here, you're going to stop and then continue to stuff. And I will show you what I mean when I get there. So now the head is sewn onto the body loosely and we have our little gap here. So this is where we're going to get a nice fill. I'm going to kind of loosen up the body stuffing into the neck so that the stuffing from the body is connected into the head part. And that kind of gives it a little bit more stability too. It creates like this, it creates a little bit of connection between the head and the body. Okay, and now I'm just going to fill in these parts here that's a little loose for my liking. And also a little bit more into the neck. 
and then I will finish sewing up that seam and we'll be finishing up with the neck part. Okay, so I finished stuffing the neck area and the shoulders, so now it has a bit more firmness to it and more better uh, better structure. I think there's a small gap right here. I'm just gonna kind of push over some stuffing. Now I'm gonna continue my stitching to seal the rest of this opening. Everything is pretty firm, so it should be rather simple. And depending on how you want the head attached to the body and how well you did your first stitches, if you did it nice and neat, maybe you can stop here. Um, if you did it messy like me and you want a little bit more stability in the neck and body attachment, you might want to go once more. Okay, see how the, the center line kind of shifts over like I was mentioning earlier. Okay, so I'm going to pull everything nice and tight. And now I'm going to go back around and do a double ladder stitch to make it extra strong. This part should be pretty easy because everything is held in place for you already. You're just making a second little stitch around. Okay, so I'm going to continue this all the way around the neck till I reach the back again. I'm going to double knot it, sink my knot into the body to hide the tail of the thread cut the end and that will be it for this part. So double knot. Hold it nice and taut. So I got a, my double knot right there. And I'm just going to take my needle back right through that seam somewhere. And kind of shove it through, poke it through the other end. Don't lose the needle in the doll. Get rid of that. And I'm just going to sink the knot. Okay. You should hear, sometimes you hear a little pop, sometimes you don't. Now we have a neck connected onto the body and it's very, very secure. And from here, you can you can kind of go back and adjust your stuffing a little bit, depending on how much you stuff the doll, but you can kind of massage it. But yeah, this is the body and the neck. And now we're going to be doing the ears. Just because that kind of helps keep its shape a bit better. I've done one without stuffing and it kind of crinkles if you wash it. Okay, so I'm coming into the middle. Sink my knot there. I always like to tug on it real tight to make sure. Then I'm going to make one long straight stitch to the other end. And I leave maybe like an eighth of an inch away from the side seam. And this long stitch is just going to be a gather stitch. So you're going to pull it and it's going to close the ear and make a nice little crease like that. And from here, I'm going to attach it to the corner of the horse's head here. So pinched it's going to be gathered it's going to be right about here make a small little sit, um, stitch you can pin it if that's easier for you i like to just hold it really and same as how we did with the neck to the body with the ladder stitch i'm just going to do a ladder stitch and stitch it neatly on the doll's head Okay, kind of pull it tug. I'm gonna make a double knot. Hi, Isla. Okay, from here I'm gonna sink my knot back down into back down into the seam. And I'm gonna kind of match it up and my needle is gonna come out pretty much right where this ear is lined up. So you just, I kind of eyeball it. So my needle will come out right about there. Okay, and I'm going to pull that needle, pull that knot and sink it. There we go. And now... 
from this point. So that just gives it an extra little, that just seals it into place a little bit better than just running the needles down to the other side, in my opinion. Now I'm gonna take the other ear and do the same thing. It'll right through the other side to the bottom. Makes that gather stitch and then I'm gonna pull it to close. And now I'm just gonna do the same thing I did with this ear to this one and do a ladder stitch all the way around. Nice and taut. I'm gonna double knot. Oops gonna sink the knot so now we're gonna do on the we're gonna sew on the face and I like to use pins to figure out where I want to place my eyes mm, I've done this enough times where I'm pretty good at placing where I want the pin to be I'm gonna take my air soluble marker and I'm just gonna make a circle where that hole is from the pin like that okay and this is when I kind of adjust how big I want the eye or how, how small okay so I like how that looks and then I'm gonna go ahead and do the nose this part is kind of tricky because it's hard to measure but I'll start in the middle and Use this guy for reference. I'll start in the middle here. Make my two marks so they're straight across from each other. This pen's running out of ink. And then I'm just going to make a mark up to the side like that. And then as much as possible, try to repeat the same angle on the other side. And that actually doesn't look too bad. So I'm gonna roll with that. I'm gonna get my embroidery thread, embroidery floss. In the back here, back of the ear, to the front-ish part of where my eye is gonna be. And pull it all the way through, and then I'm gonna sink that knot. There we go, tuck on it so it's nice and secure. It usually gets trapped in the stuffing, so it's pretty secure. And then I'm just going to fill up this circle with a stat satin stitch. So just going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth until it's filled and it looks like a nice little eyeball like that. And I'm not the greatest at satin, like doing these kind of circular satin stitches, so hopefully I don't mess it up. <laughs> I'm gonna send, I'm just trying to fill up this little space. I'm gonna send my needle across to the other side and just pretty much repeat the same steps. And then from my last stitch, I'm gonna send it back to the back of the ears. Double knot. Now we're going to come up from the bottom. To where the front of the nose is. Sink my knot. Carefully. <laughs> I come out of that first hole. Like so, and then I will go right back down to the other side. 
trying to make it nice and even. So I do two stitches. For this one I did one and I feel like he needs two stitches. So we're doing one more. Just so it kind of matches the other side. I'm going to go back down. Then I'm going to come out the bottom of the chin again. So I'm going to make one knot out the bottom like that. And then just send it right back through. We'll have to pull out the needle though. So I'm going to use my hemostat to bend it a little bit. Like that. Okay. Sometimes it gives me a hard time. And then I snip off the excess. So that hides any tail. And then we have a nice neat little nose. Sometimes it gets pulled a little bit. So you got to stick your needle in there. Kind of loosen it up and adjust it but there we go that's the face for the mane i'm using this multicolored yarn and i have a slightly bigger thicker needle with a larger eye so that i could fit the yarn through i did need to use a needle threader to to put the yarn through the needle um but i got a very long piece here and you'll see why so i'm going to start off in the front right between the ears kind of like right in front of the ears and I'm going to take my needle and I'm going to use my middle seam line as a guide and I will just push my needle through. You might need a thimble that might help to push the needle through because your finger will probably hurt <laughs> from doing this so much. Then you're going to thread the yarn all the way through to the very end right before it comes out like that. And then you'll snip it off so that you only have the part that you threaded through the seam. And then you'll just do a simple double knot like that. Make it very tight. And that's it. That's literally what you'll do all the way down um, to the back of the neck. I usually stop maybe around here. Like how I did on this one. Maybe that's like an inch. Inch between the neck and the body. So yeah, I'm going to repeat these steps all the way down. Very simple, very time consuming, but I really enjoy doing it this way. You can definitely do um, other ways of sewing the mane instead, maybe sewing it into the doll. I just like the look of this. When I go on to the little next lock of hair, I kind of lay down the one of the tail pieces here. And I actually create a knot right over that one. So I'm going to repeat the same step. Push my needle through. Sometimes it gets tough and I need to use the hemostats. If you don't have that, maybe you can use some pliers. I'm going to pull this all the way through. So I'm making a knot right over that last piece. Okay, double knot it. I'm going to move everybody to the side lay back that one tail piece and then repeat the same steps all the way down. And here is our final look of our horse. Um, the mane takes so long to do, but I feel like it's so worth it. It definitely gives it like the ragdoll look to it. And also I'm obsessed with the poly pellets in the arms and the legs. And if you can do that, I highly recommend it because it makes it so wiggly and wobbly. And I like the added weight to it. Um, I would love to see if you made this horse. Be sure to tag me. Root and Stitch is the handle on both TikTok and Instagram. So either one of those, I would love to see it. Um, I hope you have a wonderful Christmas and Happy New Year and happy creating!